The difficulty of finding work. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because I'd like to have a look at this article from ABC News which is discussing the unemployment rate. Now, for those of you that don't remember, yesterday our unemployment rate unexpectedly dropped. Dropped to 6.8% depending on where you get your data. According to Roy Morgan, it's actually increased. They use a different methodology to the ABFs in how they survey. Now, a lot of the, well, there are a lot of people who are employed, but are working zero hours and are receiving JobKeeper. Should they be considered employed? I'll leave that to the philosophers to decide. But while we have claims of unemployment going down, I can still see how it's going to be hard, bloody difficult for people to find a job, to find a job. And before we even get into this, it gets even harder, frankly, the older, well, it's tough when you're young because you're useless, you've got no skills, you don't know what you're doing, and then you maybe even have attitude that needs to get, you know, worn away a little bit. And then when you get old, once you hit 40, then ageism starts to creep in. It starts to creep in. You know, when you get 45, if you're out of some industries, you've got no chance of getting back in, guys. Ageism is a thing. And I'm sure lots of people in the comments can share stories of just how tough it is to get back in. This is the biggest problem with, with the unemployment rate so high, with job adverts just trailing. Just you're going to get scarring where people will leave the economy, or sorry, leave the workforce and may retire early, or they may just not be able, may give up on looking for work. How many people? Here's the question. I was asking my sister-in-law this yesterday because she's on JobKeeper. She works at the International Airport here in Brisbane and she can't do anything right now. So the company she's working for have got her on JobKeeper. And I say, are you going to, how hard is it going to be actually getting back into the psychology of working? Because if you take time off, you, we've all been on, been on holiday and then actually getting back to work, that in itself is a bit of an issue. How many people are going to struggle with that, guys? Struggle with getting back to work? How many people are going to make a life change going, you know what? I'm going to take a different approach. Maybe. Maybe that's why we're seeing these businesses appear. Maybe people have started their own businesses. They're looking at new ways to generate income. So the unemployment rate falls, but job seekers say finding work is still really hard. And I'd agree with that. I mean, in this market, with the uncertainty in the economy, we, we can see it here. We can see it in the job adverts. With the uncertainty in the economy, it's going to put a dampener on people taking staff on because taking staff on is a risk. It's a risk. It's costly and painful to fire people. It's difficult if you get someone on that's useless. And I know everyone will say, oh, just, just have a probationary period. That doesn't really exist, guys. That, that's not actually allowed under a con You need two separate employment contracts if you're going to do that. So Australia's unemployment rate is falling, apparently. But those without work say it's not getting any easier finding a, to find a job, especially in lockdown Victoria. I mean, it'd be impossible to find a job in Victoria. The official Bureau of Statistics figures showed 111,000 jobs were created last month, pulling the headline unemployment rate down from 7.5 to 6.8. That was despite Melbourne being totally locked down and regional Victoria under stage three restrictions, although it was the only state to record a fall in employment last month. And the effects of the lockdown and joblessness it has caused are being acutely felt by many Victorians. Melbourne couple Kirby and Kyle have been adjusting to a significantly reduced income since Kyle lost his job in March and Kirby was forced to shut down her hair salon. Our household income has been taken down to a third of what we'd usually earn, said Miss Neal, who is on JobKeeper. While they have managed to reduce their rent and car repayments, and the stage four lockdown means they're not spending as much as they used to, there are still a lot of expenses to meet. We've still got phone bills, water, electricity, gas bills. You can only go so far before it keeps on banking. It keeps on banking up on you, Mr. Neal said. He worked as a contractor in a customer-facing role prior to the pandemic and started receiving job seeker payments in March. His former employer does not expect he'll be able to rehire him until at least March next year. Now, 
what's happening in March next year, everyone? That's when we have the mortgage holidays, the second extension to the mortgage holidays disappearing. They're going to be phased out in March. Do you think that will mean there'll be a, a, a surge in economic activity? Or consumer confidence might take a hit. We might start to see some properties head into for sale then. Before then, job seeker payments will be slashed by $300 to $815 a fortnight. A change that comes at the end of next week and will revert to the all $282.85 a week payment from January 1 unless the government extends a higher rate. Do you think they will? Do you think they'll pull that off? I, I, I suspect they'll extend a higher rate there. This is the thing. There are going to be so many people that are just not able to to even make ends meet on this, probably because they've never had to. And I don't know if there'll be the political will to do it. Maybe they will. Maybe this is just a tough lesson a lot of people are going to have to learn. I wonder if some people will will start to change their opinion of, uh, of living on the dole, really, because it's, it's not much of a lifestyle. But then again, it, it's not meant to be a lifestyle. It's meant to be an emergency emergency fund to help people from being completely destitute. Um, I mean, here's the scary thing. When it's so low, you know, getting stuck on the poverty trap, you know, if, if this amount, the lowest amount is enough to disincentivize people from working, there's a lot going wrong. So the, the problem is, though, if it's too high, if the payment's too high, it can be a disincentive to working. And then it creates a poverty trap. All the while, the delayed rent and car repayments are adding up. Oh, so they've just re delayed their car. They need, they need to sell a car. They need to sell them. I've been watching too much Dave Ramsey. It's always about sell the car, sell the car, buy a, a hoopty, as he calls it, a cheap, cheap, you know, dodgy one. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's what you need to do. Can you even, could you even sell a car? Could someone even come and do an inspection now of a car in Victoria? All, um... Uh, that's the bit that we're struggling on, is what's going to happen on the other side of it, Mr. Neal said. Coming out of it, we'll have to repay all the money that we inevitably still owe. The couple married in March, just before the Commonwealth and state governments began shutting down parts of the economy. Well, they're a married couple. Why? See, this is the thing. Oh, fan, good honor. Good work, guys. Getting married. I love that. Why do they say partner up here? He is her husband. You know, and that's a title that you have to earn. It deserves some res It should be treated with more respect. I know it's the ABC. I know it's the ABC. But that that just, little little things like that just just niggle at me. Just niggle at me. I bet you it was a different couple they'd be saying husband and wife, wouldn't they? Wouldn't they? Oh, I'm going to raise a stein to that. Oh, good on them for getting married. With their income now relying on government support, they have put other life decisions on hold. Oh, no, don't, don't put off having a family. Oh, shit. I feel like now is the time that we want to, we're wanting to start a family, buy a house, all that sort of stuff. And now whether it's been pushed back or whether we're, we aren't able to do it, that's a big part of what's playing on our minds at the moment, he said. Now, here's the problem. Here's the problem. She's on a ticking time bomb. Women have a biological clock. It's going to get harder to fall pregnant the older you get. That's a dose of reality that a lot of people don't realize. Uh, we were actually talking yesterday to a colleague, to one of um, Mina's mother's friends. And uh, we were discussing, you know, just women learning about their cycle to fall pregnant. Because, you know, Rachel and I think when we were trying to get pregnant with Mina, we, we weren't doing it at the right time we didn't did not she didn't understand her cycle and how it all works and none of that's taught at school it's crazy it's crazy she only figured it out years later and i mean this fundamental stuff should be taught about about biology in school about the time restrictions that you have to make these decisions on your life on how you know to use natural methods to improve your chance of getting pregnant but they're probably the thing is stress also will pay play a factor but I mean, kids don't cost that much. You don't instantly get a teenager that's annoying. You get a little baby, you know, and they'll grow with you. You know, you shouldn't be putting... I can understand completely why you'd be scared to to have your first kid in a situation like that. I, I can understand 100%. I, I know I was terrified when we had our first child. Anyway, back to this. The Neils hope the Victorian government allows her hair salons 
to reopen sooner than the anticipated October 26 deadline, so Miss Neal can start earning money again. On that date, the salon will have been closed for 18 weeks this year. We just need to have our restrictions eased up a little bit. Let's get everyone back out, stimulate the economy, and get our communities back together. The latest ABS data confirms that Melbourne has now become the epicenter of the nation's unemployment crisis, following the second wave of the coronavirus and a hard lockdown during August that is dragging through to September as well. Hours worked fell by 4.8% Victoria compared to 1.8% in the rest of Australia, noted ABS head of labor statistics, uh, Bjorn Jarvis. In addition to the large fall in hours worked, employment in Victoria also decreased by 42,200, and the unemployment rate increased to 7.1%. However, while Victoria was the only state to record a fall in employment last month, its job, jobless rate was not the nation's highest. The dubious honour of the nation's highest unemployment rate went to South Australia in August at 7.9%. The two territories had the nation's lowest unemployment rate, with both the ACT and NT at 4.3%. Despite having very low rates of coronavirus in the community, Queensland has the nation's second highest jobless rate of 7.5%. Well, that's showing you coronavirus has nothing to do with employment. Nothing. Nothing at all. It's the government interventions, lockdowns and restrictions that have everything to do with unemployment. It's the fact now that our tourism industry is pretty much non-existent. Why Queensland is feeling the pinch, guys. That is something... Amber per Pereira is living through, telling the ABC that competition for work in Brisbane is tough. You know, a lot of people are applying for jobs at the moment. My mum, uh, as well, is applying for a new job, so it's really hard, she told the business. The former medical receptionist was dealt a double blow when she lost her job in March. It was just when my old lease was ending, she explained. I moved back in with mum for a while, and I'm currently living with my partner and a housemate. While the job search continues, Miss Peraria is keeping busy drawing. It could become a silver lining for her if the job hunt continues to prove unsuccessful. I've started doing some art commissions and drawing just to stay occupied. I don't want to just stay home all day. There we go. I've made a little website and everything. Aha! So she's discovered. I mean, this could be this could be a, a money maker. She could make another income there. This could be turn into an opportunity, a completely different lifestyle. She might probably enjoy a lot more than being a medical receptionist. That's the silver lining to these type of things, everyone. That's the silver lining. You know, I'm, I'm hoping the silver lining of the strict government intervention will be a renewed focus on people's individual liberty and paying attention to the powers that we're handing over to our leaders. So the stunning figures are not as good as they look. The Bureau of Statistics appears to show the bounce back in jobs is real rather than a statistical illusion, with internationally uh, comparable measures also showing a big drop in unemployment. If Australia measured unemployment the same way as the US, including stood down workers as unemployed, then the jobless rate would be 7.9% down from a high of 11.8% in April. That's how we should measure it. Stood down people, job keeper people. How many of them that are producing zero hours? They're not productive. Marcel Athelient from Capital Economics said the numbers appeared to show the recent Reserve Bank, Bank and Treasury forecasts were wildly pessimistic. While mutual obligations that require jobless people to start looking for jobs were introduced in August, the unemployment rate dropped from 7.5% to 6.8%, he noted. The upshot is, or, or, well, no, we saw a whole lot of people create um, small businesses. Maybe that's it. Maybe they, they decided to do it themselves. Maybe they're, they're working like this lady, doing online work or starting new businesses and have been successful enough that they don't need to depend on the government support. The upshot shot is that the labor market is now unlikely to climb to 8.5% unemployment over the coming months, as we had anticipated, let alone the 10% predicted by the RBA and the Treasury. Indeed, with restrictions in Victoria set to be loosened towards year end, employment should continue to rise. Comsec Chief Economist Gray, Craig James described today's numbers as stunning. More people were looking for jobs in August. More people found jobs 
and more employees reconnected to their workplaces, he wrote. More than 86,000 unemployed people found work. The cherry on top was a drop in the youth jobless rate from 16.3% to 14.3%. However, Federal Treasurer Josh Frydenberg was a little more circumspect. Today's numbers are certainly better than what the market was expecting, and it was better than what I was expecting, he told reporters. We had un- un- we had expected unemployment to rise to 10% at year's end. Obviously, today's data will be plugged into the Treasury models and will work that through. As the Treasurer himself noted, effective the effective unemployment rate, which includes peop- um, people working no hours or who had given up looking, was higher than shown by the official figures. And that's... That's what's really important there. That's what really matters. The effective unemployment rate, which takes into account not just those who are unemployed officially, but those who have left the labor force or seen their hours reduced to zero, has fallen from 9.8% to 9.3%. AMP senior economist Diana Mosina agrees that is a truer measure of the real unemployment rate. So we're close to 10%. That is still a long way to go to get the labor market back to its pre-COVID shape, she noted. 53% of employment lost due to COVID-19 has been regained, and around 69% of those who left the labor market have re-entered. That's still 30% who haven't. And there were some other weaknesses evident in the figure. Despite more than 100,000 extra jobs, the total number of hours work rose only 0.1% and is down 5.1% on August last year. That left underemployment, people looking for more hours of work than they got, stuck at 11.2%. It was 8.2% before uh, the pandemic hit Australia's shores late March. Likewise, there are still fewer people looking for work. The participation rate only rose 0.1 percentage points, and at 64.8%, it remains well down on the 65.9% level recorded before the first lockdowns. Labor's Shadow Employment Minister, Brendan O'Connor, said it would be a mistake to think that the peak in unemployment had passed. Yes, he's right there. Sadly, he's right there. We're going to see very significant hardship when we see JobKeeper cut, and of course, going to see the economy struggle when we see JobKeeper and JobSeeker taken away, he warned. So there we have it, everyone. There we have it. What do you think? Are you out there looking for work? Do you think it's tough at the moment? Or could this be an opportunity that people may jump onto? Will we start hearing stories probably next year about how losing my job during the pandemic was the best thing that ever happened to me? I really hope so. Maybe I'm just being naive and optimistic. But we've got to believe. Hopefully. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Please like share and subscribe to the channel if you're a fan and want to support the content i create here there are a few ways you can you can join the channel on youtube or patreon you can support us using our affiliate links at amazon ebay independent reserve or kucoin you can buy a merch from heiser says use gold pass from the perth mint or support us via paypal take care guys have a great day i'll see you next time